there. Welcome to Boxing Deep Dive. I'm Lyndon Hosking, and uh, great to have you along for another episode of Classic Fights. I've been uh, reeling out a few good ones lately. Last week's Holmes Cooney fight was very popular, and we got a lot of good feedback about that. But I've got a feeling this week's one will will more than match that one. I'm going to bring in my co-host for tonight's episode, and that is Grant Tazzy Brown. How are you, mate? Not bad, Lyndon. Is living the life of a boxing promoter. I was it's, just going to uh, say, mate, it's not easy. Yeah, not easy, mate. But anyway, June, June 11, not long to go now. Two weeks from this Saturday. Um, and yeah, man, look, I've sort of... I don't know, Linda, to be honest with you, mate. Look, you know, all our viewers see me um, pulverise Peter again and on the quiz last Thursday. I mean, those that watched it, we could also replay it, but those that watched I got off to a really fast start, 4-0. Four, four and then um, he came back with one, and then I just finished up demolishing him. And like, what about his you know the old saying, Peter, candy from a baby. Well, you've made such, much... a, made such an impact, yeah. mate, that he's decided to go and leave for about four weeks, so we won't see him. So unfortunately, you're going to so, run, you have plenty of time to study up. So, like, as you know, Linda, as our beautiful viewers know, that um, for a while there it was one one week me, one week Peter, no one could get two in a row. And then something just happened, like, you done your little movie, your gay Brokeback Mountain movie quiz. Brokeback Mountain meets Rocky, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, but then I just went on a blitz, so 10-2 ten, ten now. And the other night wasn't even, wasn't even, like, gear. close. Barely raised the yeah, sweat. Like, so, I mean, all I can say is um, there should be no doubt in anyone's minds now, guys. Who the better man is when it comes to boxing knowledge, boxing quizzes, anything. Peter's a legend. Peter would beat most people, mm. but he can't beat Grant Tazzy Brown. I think that's he's... all I got to say. Just, just like Ric Flair in the WWF. Woo! I think he's run out. He's, well, his knowledge, knowledge is um, pretty well run out, mate. I think we've um, the first, uh, you know, twenty or so episodes. He was okay, and he's he's run out of knowledge now. So you've uh, you've pulled away. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, you can you can find a little bit of form to make it interesting. Anyway, because it's getting a little bit tiring that uh, you're winning every week. Not that that bothers well, you, week, I gather. Well, you know, I mean, we are like a bit of a challenge, Lyndon, and you know, like I used to get up for it each night. Sometimes I'd be a bit nervous, but lately. I feel like I'm just walking in like, like you know, the great, who, who would I be like? Oh, I don't know. Who, Ray Robertson in his day when he won a heap on the Chavez going 87-0, and 0, just yeah. rocking up, mate, just rocking up. Well, that's obviously uh, on the Thursday night show we record it. It'll be out, or it's normally out. And then, morning, and then but... he goes, and he goes and he goes and tries to tell Devin Haney. I've seen him talk to Devin Haney. I've seen yeah. him win. Did the Devin Haney watch the quiz? <laughs> you wouldn't be associated with Peter, I think, if that was the case. But um, no, nah, Pete's got a, a busy uh, few weeks on uh, on his hands at the moment. So uh, good luck to Pete. We'll see him in about a month. But on to this episode. This is where we uh, we go back in time to a, a classic fight of the past, as the title says, and uh, go over what made it great, relive it with all the facts and figures and and uh, some of the things that happened at the time and. This is probably one that we probably should have done a while ago, Tazzy, because it's had plenty of documentaries and movies and all that about it, plenty of um, you know backstory to it. And uh, I'm referring to, of course, I better put the slide up there, and that's the Rumble in the Jungle, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman. It took place on October 30th, 1974 in Kinshasa, I think I, spelled, I said that right, Kinshasa, Zaire, and of course it was for the World Heavyweight Championship. So, Tazzy, I know this is... I think I might have been one year one year old when this happened. You obviously weren't uh, born yet, but either either way, this fight has just resonated over the uh, the decades, hasn't it? Because I mean, I think it was ranked number six greatest sporting moment of all time, not just boxing, but any sporting moment. So obviously, as I said, it's resonated over over the forty years or, or forty, nearly fifty years since uh, since the fight took place. Well, Linda, look, you've been around babies and you've got a couple of kids and. Obviously, you know, when a baby says their first words, there's usually mum or dada. Mine is, mine first words was Ali, boom, bay, yay. Ali, <laughs> boom, bay, yay. Ali, boom, bay, yay. So, I grew up in this fight. I grew up, um, I love Ali. Like, 
outside of any man, like physically, my father, my grandfather, Muhammad Ali, I loved, I loved him. You know, outside of my own blood, Ali was someone I just, I looked up to so much, and not so. Much, I mean, not always the boxing. Boxing was what drew me to him, but I'm, I'm very big when it comes to being a, a human, humanitarian, mm-hmm. and he was just so amazing and. Um, you know, look, it, it, there's no man really like Ali. And, and look, like, as, as for what he stood up for, and Lyndon, everyone's good at, about in life when things are going great for him and what, when they've got money. And people don't want to give up things, but he, he gave up the riches to stick by his beliefs. And I mean, that's he's just a beautiful, beautiful man. And like, I think if the world had more Muhammad Ali's in the world, the world would be a better place. Yeah, but in this fight. He dared to be great. They thought he was. They wrote him off against Sonny. They wrote him off against probably Fraser. And he comes back and look. You know this fight was huge. He was meant to be killed. George Foreman was a bad man. Destroyed Ken Norton. Destroyed Fraser. Destroyed people that was giving Ali troubles with beating Ali. So mathematically, this was meant to be a massacre. They go to Zaire. Don King, you know, really gets his his grip in the boxing here and. Mate, we're talking about a Linden because it's a legendary time in our sport. It's just, it, it is the World Series. It's the NBA final. This fight is just legendary. Uh, it certainly is, mate. And uh, it's such such a, uh, a massive backstory on it. Of course, uh, you know, it all started well, with Ali. He, he obviously had the three years out when he got stripped of the title back in 1967. Uh, he came back in 1970, beat uh, Jerry Quarry, Oscar Bonavina, had the uh, or the fight with Fraser, of course, that he lost in the fight of the century. Uh, came back with good, good wins, actually. Jimmy Ellis, Buster Mathis, yeah. uh, George Chavala, Jerry Quarry again. So he'd had a pretty good uh, lead-up to uh, Floyd Patterson, Bob Foster, Josh <coughs> Woodnard, Ken Norton he had the two fights with. Leading into this fight, uh, he'd come off the 12-round decision over um, Joe Fraser in the rematch. It wasn't probably one for the ages, that one. Ali won pretty comfortably. But uh, George Foreman, on the other hand, was coming off the devastating second round knockout of Ken Norton. Of course, before that, he'd, he'd knocked out Jose Roman for the heavyweight title as well. And obviously before that, he'd won the title with that second round uh, demolition of Joe Fraser. So I remember at the time, I think it was uh, Foreman was a 4-1 to one favourite. But it may as well have been 10-1 to one or 20-1 to one because no one gave Ali a chance at all. And why would they, mate? Because... Foreman was such an imposing figure. We're going to see some highlights of him in a second, but just such an imposing figure. Ali was looking to be uh, on the downside of his career, even though he was still only 32 years old. I think he was that perception was he was a bit older. Foreman was 25 years old. <coughs> no one in the right mind gave Ali a chance in hell of winning his fight. Yeah, look, and look as you said, Lyndon, there were some good victories by Ali. That mm. they're some of the better, but probably the best heavyweights of that era. You know, like in the time between where Ali couldn't box, the, the Oscar Bonavides and mm. Jerry Quarry, Jimmy Joe Ellis Bogner. was yep. a great fighter. Mm. So that, that, they were some good victories. Um, but the thing was, so I'm going to tell you now, Lyndon, the, the Ali, the Ali that beat Peter's, Peter's mate, Cleveland Williams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the, the Ali that beat Cleveland Williams, and the Ali that beat you know Liston, and the Ali that the Ali before the, they took your title off him and could and before the Vietnam War, no one beats an Ali. Yep. The movement he had, no one could mix it with that guy. Mm. Ali after he, he got his license back, those early fights, the fight with Fraser, Ali. Legs weren't there. He couldn't move no more. Mm. He had to sort of make adjustments, fight off the ropes, fighting close, all that. Because the prime Ali doesn't stop moving. You don't get near him, all right? You know, you barely get near him. Like, you know, it, obviously every now and then he might get hit or knocked down. But that Ali, but see, he had to change his whole game plan. He must yep. have thought, my legs aren't there no more. Mm. I can't move. I still got to fight. I've got to be smarter. I've got to maybe take punishment to give. Like, he just changed everything, mate. So, you know, against Foreman, he went in with a game plan. And Foreman was knocking everyone out early. 
he had to try and take Foreman in the, into the deep sea yep. and drown him, which is what he done. Yeah, he did. And obviously the, the famous uh, term, the rope of dope was invented in his fight. Rocky three was actually based on this fight as well, which was, uh, which when you look at it, made oh, sense. Sorry. Rocky three. Rocky oh, three. Club, Club of Lang, Lang. was it? Yep. 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 The first one was based over Chuck Webner. The first movie, yeah, the first movie, Rocky Three, though, Whipner. yeah, the, the, this fight wow. was was probably um, was this the, this fight was the Club of Lang fight with Rocky when Rocky wins was based on on this fight. So uh, we'll wow. discuss it a bit more as we go, mate. I just want to have a look at the lead up uh, before we get into the actual fight. And uh, as usual, it was a very en- entertaining build up when Ali's involved. Today, I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. On the last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm As a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine. Mean, medicine. Time may have come to say goodbye to Muhammad Ali, because very honestly, I don't think he can beat George Foreman. This chump has got everybody scared. Scared of what? Not to be scared of. Scared of what? I beg your pardon? You would continue boxing even if you uh, would lose over there. I beg your pardon? <laughs> you don't think about losing? Yeah, when I get down, Africa, we gonna get it on because we don't get alone. I don't like you. <laughs> it talks too much. Too much speed, coach. Too fast. Too fast. Give me that shake. What a whipping. I know you got it. Oh, yeah. I know you got it, Vic. But the man's in trouble. I'm going to show you how great I am. How great I am. And he certainly did. And I think I did read, uh, you saw there that George Foreman getting off the off the plane there, he had two German Shepherds with him and he got off right on off on the wrong foot when he stepped off the plane with the German Shepherds because <laughs> the uh, uh, Zairans, or what, I'm, I'm not sure, the people of Zaire. The, the army used to use them to they, get the... Yeah. To, to, um, to skitch him onto the people, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So he didn't get off onto the right foot. And of course, we've all seen the movie of Ali where he's running through the streets and they're all chanting Ali, boom, bay, and it just, boom, bay, and it just sh- um, sends shivers up the spine, doesn't it? Because they did it so well on the movie, but they depicted this event so well. <laughs> no, they did, mate. I was a bit sceptical about Will Smith, the Fresh Prince, playing yeah. Ali, but he done a great job. And that part when he's running through, and I might watch, I actually might watch that tonight, actually, again. The yeah. Ali movie, because um, but you know who else does that? Lyndon, Mike Hatsumura runs through the streets of Africa, and they say Mike Bumbaye. Mikey Bumbaye, yeah. So you can see the fight started here, and you can just see the size difference. And one thing I did, I did the um, all the stats on it. Ali was actually ninety eight kilos, which is uh, two hundred and sixteen pound. Foreman was only two kilos heavier at two hundred and twenty pounds. So that was surprising because to me, Foreman looked so much the bigger fighter, but. Um, yeah, as you can see there, uh, he looked a bigger fighter, but Ali, he, he wasn't going to be pushed around. No, Ali was obviously fairly fairly tall. and yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you know, no one knows the mental toughness of Ali. Like, to be able to take punishment where he, he cops so much, especially to the body and the arms. And I mean, but he knew that, you know, George... George, he had to try and take George a bit later. Like, you know, he knocked yep. out Form, uh, he knocked out Norton and Fraser quite early. But they were tailor made. The build of Fraser, that's why I say Mike Tyson, I think, wouldn't have, wouldn't have lived with Foreman because that size or Marciano, mm. Perfect sort style. of short stature, mm. Foreman, big uppercuts, yep. stylistically. So, but Ali, Ali, um, 
Ali knew he had to sort of take him late and, and if he had to be a bit defensive and, and try and get him to, to run out of gas, mate, you know what I mean? And um, yeah. and that's exactly what he done. But he, and, and, he took a lot of punishment yeah, to, to get did. to and that I was just going to say, you can see this point here. This is, I think, at the point where everyone was saying, what the hell is Ali doing? I mean, I think they thought he was in a, a, enough trouble boxing his traditional way. But when he started laying on the ropes and he wasn't really throwing a lot of punches back, he was sort of pity patting <laughs> Foreman, but obviously uh, history will show that it was the Roper dope. But at this stage here, especially with Ali, uh, with Foreman fresh, um, you, you know, you can <coughs> hear the wondering what the hell he was doing, just laying on the ropes like he was. Yeah, look, I mean, no, no man, no fighter can ever understand Muhammad Ali because how, how no one's that strong, no one's that, no one has a heart like Ali, no one has a the, 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 the winning edge like Ali. Mm. I mean, you know, there's only other sports stars and people like Michael Jordan, but basketball's not boxing. He had to um, take that much punishment, but his will to win, his will to not give up. And and Ali's not fighting for himself here as a normal boxer, Lyndon. When Ali fought, he fought for his people. Now, I'm not being a, 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 a philosophist or anything here. He fought for his people. He fought for the African-American people. He fought for his Muslim people. Ali was bigger than boxing. I mean, it mm. wasn't just about getting a victory. Yeah. He fought against. He fought against everything that was wrong in the world. He fought against, you know, poverty. He fought against racism. He fought against everything. Man, and George Foreman, even though he was a, another black man, but Foreman was more in a white man's world, living mm. like a white man. And he, Ali, fought against all of that. And, and no way was Ali going to lose. Ali was going to die this night. And no one is like that, Flinton. No one in history, I don't care who it is. Mike Tyson, Van Holyfield, Larry Holmes, Joe Lewis. No one had the heart to just go through hell like Muhammad Ali. Mm. Yeah, no, no you're right. Yeah. I didn't actually mention earlier as well, this fight was actually supposed to happen on September 25 of that year, 1974. Yeah. Uh, Foreman got cut, cut eight days. Yeah. Cut. Yeah, got cut, cut inspiring. eight days yep. before. It was rescheduled, obviously, for October 30. And I remember there was actually fears, because I think Foreman talked about maybe going going back to the States, and they didn't want They were going to do anything they but, could to keep him in Africa. So they, they weren't letting him back. leave. Yeah. They didn't think he'd come back, mate. They, they put, I think, police army on the airports. And Ali said, stop him at the airport, stop him at the, at the harbour. Don't let this man leave. And like, he might not have come back. And that was a true story. Then the day this fight had to happen, he's like, yeah, James Brown was there, the famous yeah. singer. It was an event. And yeah, they, they were worried that form was going to leave. And the other interesting uh, stat about this or fact about this is that it happened at four o'clock in the morning in Zaire because I had to go back to the States at 10 o'clock at night. So, I mean, we, we've experienced that a little bit here in Australia with having to have fights at lunchtime to go on a Sunday to go back. But 4 o'clock in the morning, that would have been tough. Although I suppose they were there for, you know, I think a month or so before the fight. So I'm sure they would have had time to probably acclimatise. I'm sure they were training at 4 in the morning and everything else. But still, pretty tough for the uh, the poor old crowd in attendance to uh, to rock up, you know, with the undercard starting at probably 2, you know, two o'clock in the morning. So, anyway... Um, <coughs> another fact about this too, Tassie, it was actually the highest viewing fight of all time. And I think to this day it still is. One billion viewers around the world really? watched this fight around the world. And um, I think at that time it, it equated to 25% of the world's population watched this fight. So it's an amazing wow. stat. And when you look at the the uh, magnitude of, say, the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight of the modern day, how big that was, this absolutely <coughs> dwarfed that fight. So it equates to, uh, I think the um, the gate was $100 million. It equates to $550 million today just for the um, for the, the revenue of the fight. So just an amazing stat. And we haven't got the volume up here, of course, because we're, we're talking over it. But uh, old mate uh, Colonel Bob Sheridan was the official broadcast or the official commentator, and he's still going to this day, forty-eight years later. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you would have as well. Then I've met the great Colonel. Yeah, I met him. Yeah, um, I met him. I think it was Robbie Peters' world title fight against yeah. Nate Campbell. Yeah, um, but he's a cool dude, and you know, 
the Colonel's seen it all, mate. And yeah, it's a great story to think that he's um he's still going today. Yeah, yeah, and he's still going strong. So, uh, for the as you can see here, this is about the, the knockout here. Ali <laughs> spins off the rope, sees that Foreman's uh, not quite defending himself. Let's fly with about an eight punch combination, and that's all she wrote. All over. Yep. And the whole yep. world amazing went nuts. Yeah, but still, um, I mean, this and the rumble, the rumble, you know, the rumble in the jungle, um, the thriller in Manila. Yeah. You know, some these are some of the biggest fights ever, and they all all involved the great Ali. I mean, um, but look, you know, they were. That was a good era, mate, of uh, uh, Lee, Fraser, Norton, and Foreman, and then later on, Holmes. I mean, Holmes... Well, um, yeah, well, it was the equivalent yeah. of probably the other four kings, which was um, obviously uh, Lee, uh, sorry, Hagler, Leonard, Duran, and um, Hearns. You know, same sort yeah. of thing around that time. But now, strange enough, they both... Well, they, not strange enough, they both got paid $5 million for the fight. Uh, I actually thought it might have been a, been a bit more. So I suppose in... Today's terms, we'll probably looking around sort of 25 to 30 million, which is, but again, these days, the massive amount of pay per views that would be watching this fight and obviously paying top dollar for it. Back oh, then, my goodness. Yeah, back then they were $20 a ticket, I think, to watch at a, at a closed circuit theatre. So, yeah, just an, an amazing fight. And, and it was obviously made into a, a documentary years later, which uh, was called When We Were Kings, which was focused on, on this fight. And of course, the Arlene movie with Will Smith focused on uh, mainly this fight. Uh, as well, but you talk about turning points in history as far as boxing goes, mate. This is right at the epicenter. Yeah, mate. Um, hundred percent. Like it's um, yeah. But look, as I said, as a kid, it's one of the first fights I ever knew of. I think it was this fight, Fraser Ali, one, two, and three, and it might have been Ray Leonard Hagler. Some of the first sort of fights I really remember with my dad. God, God, God bless him watching, you know, on, on VCR. Yeah. Um, you know, unbelievable. So after this fight, it was probably the probably the downward spiral, not the downward spiral, but probably the downside of Ali's career. He did, he fought Chuck Wepner after this fight, which is, as we said, was the subject of uh, the first Rocky movie. He also defended against Ron Lyle, Joe Budner. I uh, had the thriller in Manila with Joe Fraser. Uh, other fighters in there, Jimmy Young, he, he beat Ken Norton, Alfredo Evangelista, of course, Ernie Shavers, uh, then lost to Leon Spinks, won the rematch, and unfortunately had those two uh, losses to end his career against Larry Holmes and uh, Trevor Burbick. But on the other hand, George Foreman, well, his, his career was just getting started. Because after, <laughs> after this fight, he, uh, he beat Ron Lyle for fifth round KO, knocked out Joe Fraser again. Uh, had another couple of fights, then lost to Jimmy Young, and then that was it for 10 years. He was he was gone. He was retired and came back in 1980, uh, 1987 back. and ended up, um, he lost his first, uh, so he came back and I think his biggest win was Jerry Cooney. He knocked out in the uh, yeah. second round. Got a shot against Evander Holyfield, lost a 12-round decision. Uh, lost another decision to Tommy Morrison in 1993, and then in his next fight got his, uh, got his third attempt at it, which was Michael Mora, and of course produced one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight history with a 10th round KO and then eventually lost it to Shannon Briggs in 1997 uh, and that was it for um, for George Foreman. It was just an amazing career. So George finished with a 76 and 5 record, 68 KOs. Ali finished with 56 and 5 with 37 KOs. But just, yeah, as I said, mate, this fight, I can't believe we haven't done it uh, in the past, because when you talk about classic fights, this is the the sheer definition of a classic fight. It's boxing folklore, it's boxing encyclopedia. It's um everything that we grew up on as Ali Foreman, you know, the run in the jungle, mate. Just yeah, look, you know, what else can you say? Then a good, good, a good pick, and like. It's good that, you know, we've been reviewing a few of these classic ones lately like this because, I mean, yeah. Jesus, as I said, it's one of the first fights I ever knew of and still to this day, I mean, this changed, this changed boxing, this changed people's lives, this, what Ali done and achieved after this fight gave hope to anyone that mm. when they say that you're, you're past your prime or you're over the hill, you know, he just turned back the clock and 
And Foreman came back and changed the world and won a world title. Amazing. You know, years later, against Michael Moore. So, like, um, look, two great men, two great legends, and um, Foxy and thanks both these great men for their service to our sport. Ah, uh, one hundred percent, mate. And uh, yeah, just just an unbelievable fight. I think I think I was going to actually toss up between this one and the first Ali Fraser fight. So we've probably definitely got to do that. At some stage, I think you can probably throw Ali Fraser three in there as well. So, um, you know, thriller in Manila. But so many great fights we've still got to cover. Mate, totally agree. There's mm. so many, mate, so many. All right, well, we're going to have a, a bit of a break for a couple of weeks, mate, because, um, you know, you've got your show to concentrate on. I'm going to be going overseas next week. So we're going to give it a bit of a spell. Um, and get a few more fights, uh, you know, locked away when we get back. But, uh Thanks for uh, everything, mate. Great fight. Great uh, comments on this particular one. And uh, we'll see you, see everyone in a, a couple of weeks' time and keep the requests coming. We'll see you then. Shout out to Big Bill, Big Billy Hacking. You know, folks, Tassie. Billy. I'll see you soon, Big Billy. <laughs> Good stuff. See you, mate.